Good evening. Tonight it is Isabel's pick, and she has chosen one that we sang before, but it's a very, very well loved Easter hymn. I Know That My Redeemer Lives, hymn 152. This time we'll sing verses 7 and 8 of hymn 152. He lives and grants me daily bread. He lives and I shall conquer death. He lives my mansion to prepare. He lives to bring me safely there. He lives all glory to his name. He lives my Jesus still the same. Oh, the sweet joy this sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. All right. We are in that last chapter of the book of Philippians. We'll read verses 10 through 20. I'm almost finishing it up tonight. We'll have just a couple verses to read tomorrow evening. This section's entitled, Thanks for Their Gifts. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good for you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that, you ha now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Marcus. He says he has learned to find contentment in everything. Yeah. Paul says he's found the secret of being content. What is the secret of being content? Whether you have a full belly or an empty one, whether you're super rich or super poor, whether you have everything you've ever dreamed of or nothing at all, what's the secret of being content? Caleb. Um, it is to trust that God will provide for you. Yeah. It's Jesus again. Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus, and remembering what he has done for us. I think that's an important thing in this time again for us to remember, right? Do we have everything that we want? <laughs> no, probably not. Not right now, right? Um, we're doing very well, mind you, right? We have a nice home and plenty of food in the fridge. And we're being taken well care of, right? But we don't get to go to school. And I know you like to see your friends, right? And we don't maybe get to do some other things that we really like to do. And I know we really want to do them, right? But Paul says we can be content. Whether we have everything or not, if we keep our focus where it needs to be, right? Keep our focus on Jesus and how God supplies for us what we need in every moment. Anything else that we see in here? Caitlin? Paul tells the Philippians that he's glad that they're helping him, but he's not asking for it. Okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of a stewardship lesson in here, right? 
um, that Paul is very happy to see their faith express itself in this giving that is going on, right? He's amply supplied to buy them, um, and yet um, he's not begging for it. Um, he's just saying, I, I can see your faith is alive by the way that you support the gospel ministry. Right? And that goes on all the time today when we look around in our churches and we see the people, even today, right, even though we're not able to go into church right now, perhaps, and, and have a service the way that we want to have a service, um, people are still bringing offerings and still supporting the work so that we can at least get stuff out online, um, so that we can continue to keep the place going over these period of time when, when things are tough. And that's an amazing display of faith that we see in people. Anything else? Isabel. Um, kind of going off of what Caitlin said, Paul thanks them for supplying. Okay, he thanks them for that, right? Finds great joy in it. Anything else that we see in here? We've kind of talked about it already. Who does Paul say ultimately takes care of everything that we need? Really takes care of it all. Marcus. God. Yeah. At the end there, he said it, right? Um, God supplies, meets all our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Right? Once again, where does Paul point to? He says, God meets all your needs. And my first thought as a sinful person is maybe to go, yes, I finally get the sports car. But is that what Paul's talking about? Caleb? He's talking about our spiritual needs, not our physical needs. He's able to meet all of our needs in Christ Jesus, right? Um, and right now, he meets all of our spiritual needs remarkably well. Our physical needs, too, remarkably well, even though he's doing it through masks, right? And someday, when we stand with our God in heaven we'll see perfectly not only what he's done for us here and how he has provided for us here, but we'll also be see perfectly how he takes care of us both physically and spiritually for all eternity, right? Um, everything in Christ Jesus. And so again and again and again, we talk about looking at all things through the lens of Jesus' cross. And we have that reminder here once more. As we peer at all things through Jesus, we can be content. We'll rejoice when we see others showing their faith in this world of ours. And we'll put our hope and our trust where it really belongs. In our Savior Jesus. Of course, all to his credit. Because he's supplied it all for us. Isn't that all? Then let's pray. Dear Jesus. Please help Caitlin, Caleb, Izzy, Marcus, Mommy, Daddy, and all we know and love have a good night's sleep. Help them to fall asleep and sleep all the way through the night and wake up happy and healthy. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful night. God bless.